My name is Lloyd Cawthorn. I'm a PhD student at the University of Manchester working on theoretical nuclear physics. Now you might have heard of some of the uses of nuclear energy in power stations and nuclear weapons, so you already might be aware that it's an immense source of power. And uh, in this video, I'll try and explain to you why it is so powerful and how I work in trying to further understand these forces. First, let's take a few steps back and think about chemistry. So you, me, the screen you're watching this from, everything is made up of molecules. And a molecule is made up of atoms. So when the atoms inside a molecule rearrange and form a different molecule, we say a chemical reaction has happened. So for, so for instance, when we light a match, the wood within the match reacts with the oxygen in the air and forms carbon dioxide and water. The energy released in this reaction is seen as heat and light. Zoom in at a molecular level, we atoms inside the molecules are unchanged. They've simply just been moved around. Looking at the water molecule in a bit more detail, we can see that it's made up of three things, two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. Now these atoms aren't really red or blue, that's just to show you the difference between the two. At these atoms in a bit more detail, we can see that they are also made up of two things, negatively charged electrons, which are orbiting a positively charged uh, nucleus. The atomic nucleus was actually found in Manchester by rather just over 100 years ago. The nucleus is also made up of just two particles, a positively charged proton, which um, attracts the electrons to form the atom in the first place, and a neutrally charged particle called the neutron. A neutron sits in between the protons, making sure there isn't too much positive charge in one place, otherwise the nucleus would just fall to pieces. Nuclear physics is the study of the nucleus, so how the protons and neutrons are stuck together and how they react with other nuclei. As atomic nuclei are found in everything that make up a world, these reactions are happening in everything around us. An example of a nuclear reaction is that of beta decay, so when a neutron turns into a proton and also releases two particles, an electron, which you've seen in the atom, and something else, very different to the chemical reactions we were looking at earlier, as the number of protons in the atom changes, so it actually changes what type of atom that it is. I find this fascinating because the energy released is immense compared to anything we see in everyday life. So when we burn a match, we're using trillions of atoms to produce something visible, but when a neutron decays, something that's 10,000 times thinner than a human hair, we still see uh, the results. We have a device called a clown chamber. This machine lets us see nuclear radiation by creating a fog that reacts with particles as they pass through it. Inside is a flake of thorium, which is radioactive and is undergoing uh, beta decay. And you can see the electrons as they come through this reacting with the cloud. This is fascinating because here you have something which is 10,000 times thinner than a human hair doing something which is visible. And What's even more surprising is that the neutron itself weighs um, 10 to the minus 30 grams, or 0 0.29 more zero than one at the end. And this is producing enough energy to move a grain of sand, which weighs on average around 10 milligrams or so. To understand why nuclear energy is so powerful, we need to look at protons and neutrons in a bit more detail. See, they're made for something called quarks. And at the moment, we don't believe there's anything smaller than a quark. And they have some funny names because there's six different types. So there's up, down. Strange charm, top and bottom. A proton is made up of two up quarks and a down quark, and a neutron is made up of two down quarks and an up quark quark. You can also get particles made up of pairs of quarks. So if, for instance, if a particle is made up of uh, a pair of an up or a down quark, they are known as pions. Think of the quarks inside protons and pions being stuck to each other by something called a gluon, which kind of acts like a spring. The force that binds these quarks together is the strongest force known to humankind. And to understand this, we need to look in a bit more detail at the pion. We can think of the quarks inside pions behaving the opposite to magnets. So magnets only really attract each other when they're close by. As soon as they're separated, nothing happens. When we look at a pion, the two quarks inside the pion are very close to each other, they move freely. It's only when we try to pull them apart, the force increases, which is the opposite to magnets. And what is extraordinary is what happens when you try and pull a pion apart. Normally, when we break something into two, we are left with two halves. But the pion, when we try and split the two quarks inside, we have so much energy is needed to try and break them away from each other, that we actually produce two new quarks and we are left with two pions. Now this follows from Einstein's famous equation E equals mc squared, where he relates the energy E to the mass m by the speed of light squared. So when you break a pion apart, you're left with two pions. Now this was actually predicted by Wiltschek, Pollitzer and Gross back in 1973, and they actually won the Nobel Prize for this not too long ago in 2004. We now know that the atom is built up of electrons and a nucleus, and the nucleus is built up of protons and neutrons, and they are made up of quarks. And the forces between quarks are very, very strong, and they are what is produce 
um, so much energy involved in all the nuclear processes and all the nuclear wow. uh, My research is based on trying to understand how these nuclear forces work. And in particular, I'm studying the nuclear reaction where a photon, a light particle, reacts with a proton, something happens, and then afterwards a pion is released and the proton is left unchanged. And my work is trying to figure out what's important, so which processes are more important than others, in the something happens part of the reaction.